Okay, so this week we are uh, talking about the Second Continental Congress and the creation of America. The years that we're talking about here are 1775 and then mainly 1776 because these are the years that um, you know, we, America's been protesting, the colonies have been fighting against the British, and then this is the year that they, you know, officially break out and, you know, create their own country. Um, they write the Declaration of Independence, and they're working towards um, uh, unifying themselves to stand up against the British. Um, the Second Continental Congress um, will do a couple of things and, and be known for, for a couple of things. One is they create a continental army which is a big move because now they've officially unified all the colonies under one military unit. And they elect uh, George Washington to be the person that leads that unit. Um, and this is really where he begins to sort of build on his legend as a great military leader and also just as a great leader of, of men. Um, the Second Continental Congress will also end up writing the Declaration of Independence, which is that official statement to England and to the rest of the world that um, the colonies are now a new country um, and the United States of America is what it has become. Um, but while this is all going on, it, it, there's certain events that happen along the way that sort of, um, I don't know, build the strength of America, um, show England that, that this is going to be a war, not just, not just one or two battles. Um, and the Battle of Bunker Hill goes a long way in doing that. Um, the Americans actually end up losing this. What happens is they build a fort on top of this hill, um, actually called Breed's Hill, which is just outside of Boston. And it was an advantage point because um, it's so high and it looks down on the city of Boston that um, the British kind of grew paranoid at this. They didn't really like having an American fort that close and, and, and that high up. And so General Howe and his men, um, which General Howe, sorry, is the new leader of England, him and his men um, um, go up the hill to attack this fort to, to get the Americans out of there. Um, and it takes three attempts and, and the British lose like thousand, a thousand people. Um, but they're finally able to defeat uh, the colonists and then take over this, this new fort. So um, the Americans have been dealt, dealt a, a pretty heavy loss because um, this was really their only advantage in Boston. Um, but George Washington um, realizes a couple things, that Boston is a very valuable um, piece of land. Um, it's close to the coast. It has Boston Harbor. It has the city structure that's needed to organize his troops and organize um, uh, the, the Continental Army. And so he realizes that, that somehow um, the colonists and the Continental Army have to take back Boston. And so in order to do that, um, he realizes, well, first of all, I need more ammunition. I need more men. And he makes that a priority in um, 1775, towards the end of 1775. Um, and he sends Henry Knox to go up to Fort Ticonderoga. It's the middle of winter in New York. Um, um, but he has uh, Henry Knox and a couple of men um, uh, march up to Fort Ticonderoga, which is in northern New York, and bring back nearly 59, I think it's 59 cannons and tons of ammunition. And he brings it back to the Boston area. Um, and this is great because now, now George Washington and the, and the army have um, an, enough weapons that they can put up some kind of defense against the British in Boston. And what he ends up doing, Washington does in March of 1776, is um, finally makes a move to take back to take back Boston. And he lines the, the this hill known as Dorchester Heights, which um, again is a high point above Boston, and lines up these cannons along there during the middle of the night. And one morning when the British wake up, they see that this hill is just dotted with, with American cannons. Um, this is enough to scare and intimidate General Howe, the leader of the British Army in Boston, and they um, agree to evacuate Boston. So thousands of British soldiers and loyalists that are living in Boston evacuate. And so the Battle of the Dorchester Heights accomplishes that main task of getting back Boston in the hands of the Colonial Continental Army. Now, during this whole period of time, this maneuvering between the two militaries and, and getting back Boston in the, in the hands of the, um, of the Americans, um, an olive branch uh, or a, a peace offering is sent to the British known as the Olive Branch Petition. And this is uh, meant to sort of end the violence. After Bunker Hill, the Americans um, wanted to try to find a way, one last opportunity to make peace with King George. Uh, but King George, much similar to the response to the Declaration of Rights, was not having any of it. He said it was too late um, and, and that any peace that was going to be had now would not um, happen until after war. He labeled the um, colonists as traitors. 
and vowed to make them um, suffer and, and would bring them to justice in his own words. Okay. Now, this response from King George III only pushed the Congress to begin declaring their independence. This was sort of one of those things where, you know, we've tried to make a peace along the way. Now there's really no other option than to finally declare our independence and become our own separate country. And during the same time period that the petition is sent and King George's response is, is returned, a man by the name of Thomas Paine, a really um, prominent author during the time, writes a, a, a short book called Common Sense. And it was known as a pamphlet, but it's really just, just a short book. And um, within this book, he writes about how American independence um, is the cause of, of men that want freedom around the world. What he believes is that if America can, can declare independence from the British monarchy, then other countries like France, um, other colonies across the world will also rise up against the monarchies of the world to, to create free countries. There was this really grand idea that he was writing about, and, and he believed that this was the greatest cause um, during this time. And so he published 120,000 of these copies and sent them throughout the colonies. And what it did was really um, inspired a lot of the leaders in the Second Continental Congress. It built up support within the other colonists living um, in America to break away from England and to create their own country. And one of the men that it, um, that it uh, influenced or inspired was Richard Henry Lee, a man from Virginia, he uh, was working in the Second Continental Congress and he proposes an idea of declaring independence, much the same as Thomas Paine had. But, he, but in a, an official position, in a powerful position, Henry Lee, uh, Richard Henry Lee writes this proposal and hands it to, to the committee. Um, what they agree is that we'll table it for a couple of months. In the meantime, let's have five people, um, three of them, Thomas Jefferson, Ben Franklin, John Adams. We're going to have these guys sit down and actually write an official document declaring our independence. And in a couple months, on July 2nd, we will vote on whether or not we want to declare our independence or whether we're going to stay a part of England. And so the, the, the Second Continental Congress has roughly two or three months there where they're thinking about this, where this idea is being floated, and, um, and then they assign um, the writing of it to, to the Committee of Five. And like I said, this Committee of Five was made up um, of, of, of three very prominent people along with two others. Um, Thomas Jefferson probably being the most famous of the three. Um, he's the one that's tasked with writing the first draft of the Declaration of Independence. And it takes him about three weeks to do this. Um, once he's finished, he brings it to two of his other colleagues, Ben Franklin and John Adams. They put the final draft together. They make some, some changes to some key language that we'll talk about later. Um, but then the final draft is submitted at the end of June of 1776. So it's about a three to four week process that they go through to write this thing. They submit it, and then on um, July 2nd, the Second Continental Congress is voting on whether or not they're going to declare independence. And on this day, July 2nd, 1776, they agree, um, we need to break away from England. Two days later, on July 4th, they approve of the Declaration of Independence. Um, and, and the Declaration of Independence basically lays up two arguments. One is that everybody is entitled to certain rights, and they list them as life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, the other th argument that the, the document makes is that King George III has violated these rights, and that because he has violated these rights, um, the colonies have no other choice than to declare their independence. And so obviously it's one of our founding documents. It's a powerful document. It's really what other countries in the future will model their independence after. Um, and, and that is, again, the jumping off point for us for next week when we start talking about um, this revolution and, and how this document and this idea of independence is what inspires our troops to defeat the British and, and to create the United States of America. All right, so um, that's all I got for you this week. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you let me know. You guys have a great weekend.